confirming what Tiff Macklem said a few weeks ago, the Bank of Canada saying the economy is no longer in excess demand, but that the bank wants to see further sustained easing in core inflation. Let's unpack all of this. We've got Earl Davis, head of fixed income and money markets at BMO Global Asset Management, joining me on the desk, and Allison Boxer, economist at PIMCO. Earl, I'll start with you pretty much right down the line in terms of what we were expecting. Yeah, exactly. We were uh, expecting a hold, and we expect the hold to remain for uh, quite some time. And uh, Allison, this is the first chance that the Bank of Canada will get in a meaningful way to address its own outlook with respect to interest rates at a time where we have seen quite a bit of easing take place in the bond market. Yeah, I think what we're seeing really reflects the fact that the Bank of Canada is in just a challenging balancing act right now. On the one hand, the economy is really slowing, um, but on the other hand, you know, inflation, they're still concerned about how sticky it looks, particularly on wages. Um, so I think that, that for now, the Bank of Canada just needs to remain on hold and sort of, you know, sort of wait for, for more data before they can, um, you know, before they can, they can look to, to start to ease. Earl, on that point uh, of the easing that we've seen in the bond market, do you think that the Bank of Canada should be coming out a little bit more forcefully against that and the magnitude of the cuts that are being priced in by the market right now? And that's a great question because the easing that we're seeing in the bond market right now actually is stimulative to, to the economy, to jobs, to, to housing. The reason why they don't want to come out more forceful, and I think this is the right tone that they have, they don't want to add volatility to the market. So if they come out more forceful, uh, what would happen is you'd get the sell-off, and that's volatility. They do not want volatility. So they want to try to ease it higher or let the market ease itself higher by remaining on hold with that, I would call it a, a loose hiking bias. Well, that's kind of uh, what I'm curious about. I'm just going through the statement where they say, and again, this is reiterating comments that Tiff Macklem made a few weeks ago in a speech that higher interest rates are clearly restraining spending. Is this a signal that the market um, has been taking, basically, uh, Earl, that, that the bank is done? Yeah, I, th I think the signal didn't necessarily come from the Bank Canada. It came from the Fed and Powell and the, and the strong yeah. on hold at the end of October. That's where we saw the significant rally in rates and, and, and the like. So it's actually reducing the impact of high rates because market rates are discounting, you know, 100 basis of the hikes by, by October and the, uh, sorry, of eases by October and the easing cycle starting in April. So uh, they're offsetting that. In some ways, we're in the hardest part of monetary policy, Allison, uh, with the bank referencing that core inflation is still around three and a half to four percent, but the economy is showing material signs of deterioration, particularly on the unemployment perspective. This is where the bank really has to walk that line between dealing with inflation, but not tipping us over into a worse slowdown than necessary. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is this is certainly a challenging point for them. You know, where inflation tends to lag activity, and we're seeing activity soften. Um, but the you know the bank, as we could see in the statement today, you know doesn't want to fully let up while inflation is still still above their target, and there's still concerns, particularly on the wage side. Um, so I think what they're doing now is they're just sort of signaling they're maintaining this this hiking bias. Uh, they're keeping rates on hold, and they're just not quite ready to to fully pivot towards towards easing and, until they see more progress on inflation. Earl, this time last year, I think you were full of shock and awe telling investors we are going to see significantly higher rates. We walked into the year expecting cuts. That didn't happen. Now we're going to walk into 2024 expecting cuts. Um, do you think the market's right this time or are they going to be proven wrong again? I, I think part of it's right. Like the way we look at it, we, we do expect cuts, but we don't expect them to, to start until Q3 this year. The market is saying it starts in Q2. Um, so that's an important aspect, right? And, and from this point on, and actually the market discounting eases and the significant amount of eases now offsets the possibility of cuts because of the stimulative effect. So it is a fine line. And I think one important thing that we have to remember is that although the unemployment rate's at 6%, there's still job creation. It's just the immigration policy and more people coming into the country searching for jobs than their job creations uh, adding to that 6%. So you got to dig down into the details a little bit as well. Allison, tomorrow, Deputy Governor Gravel, even though we don't have the press conference today, um, will be, you know, give us an opportunity to further flesh out where the Bank of Canada is sitting. What are some outstanding items you'd like to hear the bank discuss? 
Yeah, I think one of the things we're really focused on for them next year is is just how they're going to deal with this challenge around shelter price inflation. You know, Canada is sort of unique amongst the different developed market economies in that you have, you know, mortgage interest costs directly in the inflation basket. That's actually really, you know, rents and, and mortgage interest costs have been what's driving inflation in recent months. I think that's another thing that we're sort of looking for. How is the bank going to deal with that next year? Are they going to ultimately pivot towards, towards focusing on a more core inflation measure than they have so far? So that's one of the things we're looking for from them. Uh, just going through the statement and some of the new language that appeared this time, Earl, I'll, I'll kick it over to you. I did allude to it, but the fact that they are, you know, talking about the slowdown that we're seeing in housing and sort of business investment, exports, um, the labor market, the new sentence here is these data and indicators for fourth quarter suggest the economy is no longer in excess demand. Do you think that there is a risk of, of the resurgence? I mean, how how... How much pent-up demand is there just waiting for any kind of reprieve on the rate side? So this is a very interesting point. So uh, the pent-up demand is now in wage inflation because that takes time to cir circulate back into the economy, both from higher paychecks and buying more, but also through higher costs. So now we're in a bit more of an insidious uh, inflationary aspect with wage inflation. And that's what they're trying to, that's why we, they're happy to see unemployment rate at 6%. I think they want to get it closer to six and a half uh, before they start easing and core under three before they start easing. So that that there's some slack in the, in, in the employment picture and that uh, limits the wage increases to two, 3%, the target rate of inflation, as opposed to the 5%, you know? And that, that's what they're trying trying to offset. Allison, what's the threshold for rate cuts? What do you think the bank needs to see? Yeah, I think the bank needs to see more of what we've been getting recently, more progress on core inflation, getting closer to, to at least the you know, sort of upper end of their target range. And I think we need to see the unemployment rate rise further. There are concerns, uh, of course, of you know, the damage that could take place in the economy, Earl, we've seen signs of bankruptcies, we've seen delinquencies tick up, not necessarily on the mortgage side of things, but in other parts of the credit market, you know, auto loans, credit cards, um, that sort of thing. And then there are concerns, as you know, about mortgage rollovers and, and, and how that's going to affect Canadians. I haven't heard the bank really talk about that in a way that they're super concerned. And we just got bank earnings, and I listened to the conference call again, not talking about it in a way that they're super concerned about it, even though the broad swath of Canadians are going to be facing this hit to their pocketbooks. Yeah, I think the reason why they're not super concerned is basically this is ex expected. When you raise interest rates that much, there is an impact on, on the economy in regards to delinquencies and the like, and the banks have those models. They would get concerned if those delinquencies start to accelerate and they go above the model based off of where interest rate is. So that's why you're not seeing the concern as of yet. All right. We're